scratch building vehicles for Warhammer 40k is easier than you think, and it's cheap. I'm going to show you how I build vehicles from scratch using this truck design as a guide in both Orc and Astra Militarum flavours. Let's do it! For this kind of work, I always use styrene sheet, also known as plasticard. It's easy to cut with hand tools, easy to glue, and produces robust, long-lasting models. It comes in a variety of thicknesses, but the most common, and in my opinion the most useful for 40k vehicles, is 1mm or 40 thousandths of an inch. Coincidence? I think not. I'm going to start the build with the chassis, and I'll take you through some of the basic techniques. Trace the template onto the styrene. Use a sharp hobby knife and a metal straight edge to score your cut lines a few times. I prefer a scalpel, but X-Acto type knives are great too. But in my opinion, utility blades are too thick and clumsy. Once you've scored the surface of the sheet, you can snap it, which speeds things up and keeps your wrists in good shape for other, uh, activities. This technique produces quite a clean edge, but the knife leaves a burr on the surface, which really does need to be removed. I like sanding sponges for this, since they're a bit more gentle, but fine sandpaper works just as well. There's no abrasive material snobbery around here. We now need to drill the holes for the axis. I start by marking the centre with something sharp, a centre punch, a nail or the tip of your knife will do just fine. We just need a small indent to stop the drill going rogue. As a rule of thumb, when drilling styrene you shouldn't drill holes larger than the thickness of the sheet, so I always start with a 1mm drill in a pin vise. I then enlarge the holes to their final size using a 2 and then 4mm drill bit. I did this by hand to demonstrate, but feel free to use a tool, you know, like that adult you claim to be on a day to day basis. Oh, and when I did this for real, I take the two chassis sides together to ensure both sides line up nicely. Assembling sheet styrene is very simple with the right tools and materials. For me, the most important is an engineer's square or some other squaring tool. It doesn't have to be fancy, but you do need something to help at right angles. I'm a big fan of these 1-2-3 blocks. They're heavy, they're magnetic, and they're literally covered in right angles, and you're going to be seeing a lot of them in this build. For glue, I think the only sane option is a brush-on plastic adhesive. I like Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. This wicks its way through the joint via capillary action, meaning you can apply it after the parts are lined up, which is a godsend. Using other types of glue, like super glues or tube plastic cement, will work, but they can be a bit messy. We'll come back to the chassis later, because attaching the wheels is best done at the end of the build. The parts for the cab were cut out and cleaned up in the same way as the chassis, producing a nice kit of parts to assemble quickly. There are some complex angles for the cab, so I like to start by attaching any parts that form a right angle, which gives the best chance of keeping the whole thing square and symmetrical. The roof is a bit of a pain to fit, but bear with it. I added the front portion first and then sanded the rear part to fit. And don't worry if you have any gaps at this stage, we're going to have to be doing plenty of filling and sanding later on, so it's best to concentrate on keeping things square and forming strong bonds between the sheets. Filming the windscreen cutout was nigh on impossible, but you get the idea. Drill some corner holes, connect them with your knife, glue it to the model and then have a nice lie down. The top of the bonnet is in three sections, which form compound angles, so I found getting the centre one in place first is best, and then fettling the outer edges to fit. I've built five of these trucks now, and this part has always been a complete pain in the ass, but it always works out. Uh, let's do some wheel arches. The front of a vehicle always has an outsized effect on its character, so it's worth spending a bit more time on it. These models are heavily influenced by the US M35 truck, so I've tried to capture some of that feel by layering sheets of styrene to mimic the profile, building a radiator grill from pieces of 2mm hexagonal styrene strip, and with the headlights. On some of the older builds I used resin castings by Zinge Industries, but with the latest pair I placed a nail art bead inside a small section of plastic tube. For the Astra Militarum version of the truck, I also used the nail beads, but smaller, to form all of the rivets. The next stage involves filling all of the gaps. Since this model has a lot of thin sheets joining at jaunty angles, I use sprue goo, which is bits of sprue or styrene offcuts dissolved in plastic glue. This both fills the gaps and strengthens the joints, which, well, it's ideal. Once that's fully set, everything gets a quick sand, which I didn't film because of my crippling competence deficiency. 
To finish the cab on the Astra Militarum truck, I attached the nose assembly and made a pair of doors from layers of styrene sheet. He's got the nail art rivet treatment, and I found the blessings of the Emperor deep in my bits box, right next to Commissar Yarrick's sense of object permanence and uh, some more rivets. Then all that was left to do was mount these novelty oversized auto cannons that I scavenged from the Contempt of Dreadnought sprue. I plan on using this as a proxy for a Taurox, so I need a pair of them. And while human sized auto cannons would have been a better fit, I'm not one to spend money on something when there's a pair of heresy era giganto launchers just sitting there in the bits box. So, what about the Orc version? The build is pretty much identical save for the details, and there's so much space to do whatever you like to tailor it to suit the style of your army. For my tastes, I like big statement pieces on the front, like the horns in this build, which came from an Age of Sigmar Iron Jaws banner pole, or just shoving something spiky on there never hurts. <coughs> As for the details, I like to use styrene rod for rivets mixed in with hex section styrene to represent bolts. The more random the assortment, the better. Extra armor plates are a must-have for that ramshackle look, and I'll be covering how I make them in the next section of the video. I'm also a big fan of chained up windows and other chain details for which I use cheap jeweler's chain, secured in place with small wire pins. I made a new radiator from styrene rod, since the human one looks like it might actually work. Threw on a big shooter from the bits box, and a nice safe looking external fuel tank made from styrene tube and a hose from Zinge Industries. You could use guitar string or green stuff for this, but I'm a big fan of these flexible little guys. The lower half of the truck bed is identical on both the Orc and Astra Militarum builds, and the seven parts go together very simply. I've not bothered to fill in the very bottom section of mine because it's never going to be seen, and that whole Rogal Dawn business never really bothered me. For the guard truck, I wanted to include the canvas cover that's such an iconic feature of the M35. On an older Orc version, I made this from 0.25mm styrene sheet, which was an utter nightmare. So, this time around, I made a frame from 3mm styrene square profile bent to shape with a heat gun, which was also a nightmare. I covered this with a wet wipe, obviously. I let it dry out on a radiator for an hour or two and then loosely tacked it in place with superglue. And then I applied a mixture of thin PVA to form the shape of the cover and to firm it up. It did need a second coat, but it's surprisingly strong and the texture looks fantastic. The Orc version is open topped and tries to sell the looted vehicle vibe. I built the sides from several pieces of styrene sheet that I chipped away at the edges to approximate that famous Orc precision engineering. And with a few bits of U-channel section styrene and more nuts and bolts than is healthy, I had myself another truck for the wire. Except it needs wheels. I'm using these 27mm resin wheels, again from Zinge Industries. They do the job well, but the truck design will accommodate anything from 25 to 30mm if you want to use an alternative or fancy looting your kid's toy box. I used 4mm styrene rod for the axles and glued everything in place, making sure the chassis was level on the table before everything set to avoid wobbly model syndrome. The final job was to add a pair of fuel tanks. These were cut from a section of toy pipes capped with styrene sheet and given a damn good riveting. On the other trucks, I varied the style of these because well, I can't build anything the same way twice. And speaking of things that test my attention span, I'm going to try some paint and lore at the same time today, because talking about painting makes me grumpy. And I've also got some flimsy justifications to make about these models. In my head cannon, these trucks are a standard Astra Militarum design. All sorts of utility vehicles are mentioned throughout the lore, and they never really get more than a passing one sentence description. And I think borrowing design cues from a late 1940s US truck definitely fits with the vibe of the current guard model range. Though, to be fair, the Imperial Guard models have always been some flavour of World War II in space. Obviously, the Orc versions are looted. There must be hundreds of thousands of these ubiquitous trucks scattered across various current and former Imperial worlds, so it's inevitable they would end up in the hands of the enemy, modified to suit their unique approach to, well, everything. So then, as a great man once said, 
It looks like we've got ourselves a convoy. That's it then. Five trucks done. I've built these over the space of a couple of years and somewhat refined the process with each build. And I think they make a great starting point for someone wanting to scratch build their first Warhammer 40k vehicle. I see the basic design as a nice jumping off point, and by varying the details it should be fairly straightforward to build unique and interesting models for your own armies. If you want to have a go yourself there are templates for the basic truck down in the video description, and if you do have a go please share a picture of what you come up with, I need the validation.